All right. I'll tell you about uh, stars and black holes and uh, you know the universe as a whole. This is the story of black hole. Uh, it's a fascinating tale of education, uh, evolution of our knowledge on universe, how the things change, how things evolve, how we, you know, as we go on uh, observing the universe, uh, which way we keep revising our ideas on the cosmos. That's the whole game. Uh, we are all here very busy doing our day-to-day -day course, you see, studies, life, family, so on and so forth. So many things we have to attend every day. But then we have to realize we are part of a vast universe. We are not, you know, alone. We are part of an entity. And then as you look out there in the cosmos, you see what we call galaxies. These are, you see, the galaxies that you see from the Hubble telescope. There are billions of galaxies that you see in the universe. And each of that, like this one, consists of some 400 to 500 billions of stars. Billions of stars and then our own sun. And that sun is just a one tiny dot. Even if this one tiny dot contains hundreds of stars, so big is one single galaxy. The sun is as small as this one. But there are stars this big in the universe. Thousands, ten times the sun, twenty times the sun, or even, you know, hundred times the mass of the sun. Big, big stars are there in the universe. What happens to them when they exist their internal nuclear fuel? As you know, probably, uh, the uh, hydrogen atoms fuse together in the sun uh, to produce energy. And then at some day, the hydrogen is going to get over. Even within the sun, the, the sun has lived some 5 billion uh, years in the past, but never mind, it is going to live another five billion years. So you can have many more TED Talks here and, you know, many more degrees <laughs> and uh, your, uh, you see, your careers to make, your financial planning to do, your families to make, your children. The important point is the life cycle of sun is very different from life cycles of massive stars. When the stars are more massive, say 10 or 20 times the mass of the sun, then they burn much, much faster. Their life cycle is, their internal burning is much faster, their fuel will get over very soon, and then what is the final fate of such massive stars? That is the you know beginning of the story of the black hole, which is, I think everyone has probably read somewhere or the other in the newspapers. So, uh, to find out that particular, you know, answer, you need the theory of relativity of Einstein. Because what happens is, really, the star is governing uh, the, uh, you know, is governed by the internal uh, nuclear fuel, as I said, cycle. And then what happens then is uh, uh, the gravity takes over. It is the uh, entire game of gravity. That is what counts. In 1939, Oppenheimer and Schneider, the famous, uh, you know, physicist Robert uh, uh, Oppenheimer, uh, and his student, they worked out the using Einstein's equations, what will happen to, you know, a massive star. And they found out that the entire star, which is, you see, thousands of kilometers in radius, it will collapse to one single dot. Like the one in I, English I, you put on the top. 
that dot smaller than that size and within a matter of few minutes tens of seconds the star which lived millions of years will you know collapse like that and that kind of a dot is really the space time singularity in the same year 1939 uh, as oppenheimer and schneider did their work immediately einstein was very displeased and unhappy with uh, their work he straight away said no nothing doing a star cannot do it how can a star collapse like this and become a point like that and then uh, everyone was quiet einstein has spoken you see so uh, there was a total silence in the field but only in 1960s what happened was that amazing uh, you know uh, phenomena were discovered in the universe the quasars the radio galaxies and so much energy was produced over there that no usual known laws of physics would explain it and then people thought ah there was this oppenheimer there was this schneider and there was this uh, concept of singularity concept of singularity hidden within the horizon of gravity and then big development started in 1960s and 70s on black holes uh, stephen hawking roger penrose john wheeler uh, kip thorn big big names you see uh, and a huge development took uh, place uh, in the game so this is uh, you know a kind of artist conception of black hole you can't just see it like a star out there because by definition the black hole doesn't allow you know any light to escape so it is known only through its uh, you know effect on its environment but then physicists uh, uh, applied in a very big way the whole of the black hole theory but there was one very important catch in the entire game and the catch was that people remembered you know the oppenheimer schneider work and people you know brought everything in but they had to you know show in general that every star will become only a black hole every massive star when it died it will become a black hole only this had to be proved because the oppenheimer schneider model was very simple you see so the scientist had not proved really that every massive star will you know go to a black hole only in the past many decades what has happened is that many many models have been worked out including uh, you know the indian groups uh, uh, also uh, and uh, what turned out is that the singularity i was talking about the star collapsed to uh, uh, collapsing to a singularity uh, you know very very dense region sometimes it can be hidden within a black hole but at other times it can be visible also so then the hypothesis was given by penrose 50 years ago exactly uh, about 50 years ago that singularities must be hidden so i mean he gave a more dramatic word no naked singularities and we must have a cosmic sensor hiding all singularities and singularities are not so bad actually you don't have to hide them but anyway uh, in order to develop the black hole physics somehow scientists assumed this and the conclusion was both black holes and visible naked singularities develop as collapse final states lots of groups worked out all this uh, results over past uh, you know 2 uh, 3 decades including uh, our own uh, group also uh, the important point here is that to tell you in pictures the earlier scientists thought that sun like stars will become white dwarfs but more massive stars will necessarily become black holes but now the difference is the sun like star will become white dwarfs but massive stars either they can be become black hole or they can explode like a fireball the point is that either it can become black hole or it can explode so that became a big emotional upheaval you see scientists also have emotions obviously i mean 
we generally have the you know impression of scientists like you know so mathematics and you know writing formulae so scientists had invested so much but there is an emotional uh, you know upheaval but uh, it was the first page article in new york times stephen hawking accepted that uh, in fact uh, singularities without horizons uh, do happen our own work uh happened over here uh, in past uh, many years they invited me to write uh, an article i wrote one there is a hollywood star also who was interested in stars and final fate of stars and uh, she was very excited i want to be a rebel star i don't want to a black hole you know a grave <laughs> i would like to sort of explode away so we had wonderful conversation and so on but of course uh, despite being in mumbai for such a long time i have not been able to you know attract any bollywood star in the discussion of uh, you know <laughs> so, <laughs> there there goes there go there goes you see the hollywood and there goes the uh, bollywood uh, the recent developments have been uh, astronomers have now been asking because many groups have worked on these things and uh, well uh, so black holes are there and naked visible singularities are there what are we going to see out there can we observe something so there have been lot of developments on that much more interestingly recent papers have come in fact in past uh, few weeks and months from places like cambridge and princeton and uh, you know top places in the world uh, confirming that in fact singularities without horizons also do occur so that's very interesting and satisfying you know whether i mean whatever happens whether they cite you whether they don't cite you all those thing, things are fine but you know our work is well into discussion for quite some time because of the uh, monographs the the cambridge and oxford and others have published but more so because of you know the scientific uh, american and angela shelton like uh, you know episodes uh, but the uh, sort of uh, it is intriguing uh, why all these things are so important just a word on that you see when you are close to a singularity such high densities what happens is that the gravity forces and the quantum forces come together they work in unison otherwise we don't have today a good theory describing the quantum gravity effects in you know unified manner Uh, in a satisfactory manner so if you can see the signals you see coming from this uh, very dense regions or the singularities then you know you have a real hope of finding out we have string theories we have loop quantum gravities but not really telling us too much so it is the unification of physics as a whole that is creating or making this as a really frontier problem it's really like a mini big bang big bang singularity the origin universe origin of the universe you all have heard so uh, if a naked singularity occurred then there would be a you know a blast like mini big bang whenever a massive star collapsed purely under the pull of its own gravity and now you see this is the event horizon telescope which is going to see the center of our own galaxy the milky way so they are you know really trying to make the experiments observational missions the real you know quest is to understand the cosmos and here are the ligo you know telescope uh, uh, arrays and uh, gravitational waves could bring to us some of this uh, signals here is uh, you know a recent book uh, that i wrote which describes many of this uh, developments in quite some uh, detail uh, it's uh, it grew really out of the scientific american article uh, discussions uh, doing frontier science in india how is it like i must say you know a couple of words here uh, recently you know venki ramkrishnan said indian science congress 
it's a circus and this is you see printed out there in a hindu article and he was not afraid to you know say this in public is this all correct well there are few good places you see in india where you can do some work sit down good facilities and so on but really speaking bearing you know few good places few places you can count on your fingers really our uh, you know uh, universities are in shamble uh, sort of you know in a bad shape and we have to do something about it uh, looking at our work, own work uh, objectively an effort uh, you know it's an effort to work at the frontier of knowledge i must say that we have you know basic infrastructure problems so you run into those you have to take care of that i need not go into nitty gritty uh, you know for the moment but we re what we really need today is to solve this issues you see so many young people aspiring young people are there they are no less intelligent than anybody in the world i mean i have gone to few countries several countries and you know they they deserve opportunities what is needed is attention on education and research and this is sorely missing the education is suffering in this country we need to do something really really drastic to you know revive and through it is your children your generation so it is for you really to take up uh, you know all the responsibility and do something about it you cannot say that oh we are all you know uh, us bound target audience well uh, suddenly you know some change may be there you know some president may come who will, oh no stay in your country so what are you going to do thank you